Shanghai Disneyland is the first Disney theme park to open. I'm Chris. This is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, entertaining. And today, Disney Corporation just announced that Shanghai Disneyland will be opening next week on May 11th. And they announced, they actually put out a press release uh, with their health and safety plan detailing everything that's going to change in the theme park. And so in this video, we're going to go over the 12 big changes at Shanghai Disneyland that likely foretells what the changes will be at the other Disney resorts. Because the Disney CEO recently said uh, that, you know, they'd be looking at doing things probably similarly as they did them in Shanghai, looking at the other theme parks. I've also, after we talk about Shanghai Disneyland, got some notes that have come out of uh, Orange County, Florida, where Disney World is and where Universal Studios is. And there they've actually had like a government task force get together to talk about what they're going to require uh, Disney World and Universal Studios to do when they reopen. But first, we are going to talk about Shanghai Disney going through this playlist so the uh sorry going through the press release and the 12 big changes uh so first of all the reopening date is may 11th i am filming this on uh, cinco de mayo may 5th 2020 and a lot of people said chris this is late for a live stream well it's because this was breaking news and so i want to get it out today hot off the presses uh and so the first big difference and we go here with a with a, a number, maybe, hide, number. All right, so the first big difference uh, is going to be controlled capacity. So Shanghai Disney has a capacity of 80,000. The government has limited them to 30% uh, of that, uh, but uh, Disney has said they're going to operate in the beginning with an um, even lower capacity than 30%, so they'll be allowing less people in the park to start. Uh, the second big difference is social distancing. Of course, people could have foretold this and said, I'm sure there's going to be social distancing. They're going to have social distancing uh, in ride lines, in uh, restaurants, in ride vehicles, in other facilities throughout the park, and they're also going to implement uh, increased frequency of sanitation and disinfection. So if we take a look, they actually released a couple of pictures as to what this looks like. And so what's actually interesting, and it's a little hard to see in this picture, but this is uh, the line to get into the park, and they have these things right here, and it says, do not stand here. And maybe here's another picture to look at where this one also says, uh, do not stand here as well. Please do not stand here. So instead of marking where you should stand, they are marking where you shouldn't stand. Um, so number three, the third thing that's going to be different at Shanghai Disneyland uh, is that some of the rides and attractions, they are going to remain closed. So not everything is going to open all at the same time when Shanghai Disney opens. In particular, the children's play areas and the theater shows will remain closed. The uh, fourth thing that's going to be different at Shanghai Disneyland, the fourth big change, is in order to accommodate social distancing... Uh, the parades and nighttime spectaculars are going to return at a later time. So uh, no parade, no Fantasmic uh, at uh, you know Disney California. You can expect no World of Color because those are places where a lot of people will come. Instead, they are going to have a special Disney character procession called the Mickey and Friends Express that will take place several times a day. And the Enchanted Storybook Castle will come to life each day at dusk with some evening magical moments. Now, people love character appearances. How are the character appearances going to change? Well, they're still going to have characters, uh, but when the characters come and go through the different lands, they're not going to allow close interaction, and they're not going to allow uh, close-up photos during the initial phase of reopening. So don't expect to get any close character photos. Number six, uh, they're to do more sanitation. And uh, in one of the pictures they released, there it looks like that of the uh, Disney employees cleaning things even more. Uh, but they're going to also be uh, supplying hand sanitizer at attractions, restaurants, and stores. So expect a lot of hand sanitizer throughout the resort. The seventh big change at Shanghai Disney 
and there's a big one, is that uh, you won't just be able to buy general admission tickets and go in on any day. Uh, admission is going to be dated admission tickets that you have to buy ahead of time, and on-site ticket sales will not be available. So you have to buy them before, and that's how they're going to make sure the capacity uh, doesn't exceed their 30% government regulation. Uh, also, annual pass holders must make a reservation as well. Um, and during the uh, advanced reservation period, anybody who has a general admission ticket uh, will not be granted admission during the time when they are doing this. Uh, I think we can expect this across all the Disney resorts as they reopen as a way to manage capacity. Actually, that's something that uh, the Tokyo Disney resorts have been doing a long time. Tokyo Disney, when you buy a ticket, you buy it for a specific day because Tokyo Disney uh, regularly gets way too full. The uh, eighth big change is that to go to Shanghai Disney uh, once they reopen on May 11th, you will have to provide some extra personal information when you go in, including your name, your phone number, your ID number, like on a driver's license or a passport, uh, via their online channel before you arrive at the resort and after you buy your tickets. And then uh, you'll be provided a Disneyland reservation QR code that you have to show uh, when you enter the theme park. Now, number nine, and I can't figure out if this is the same QR code as before, but they also say you will have to register a health QR code prior to arrival. And you will have to present the health QR code presented uh, as you enter the Shanghai Disney Resort, and only guests with a green health QR code will be allowed entry to the resort. And so I'm not sure if that's something that's part of the registration before or if that's a separate Chinese government QR code registration Um and by the way, I'm seeing a bunch of questions in the chat. Uh, I will get to those. Uh, but first, I want to get through the big changes, and then we'll go to some questions, and then we'll talk about um, Florida as I then eat my um, boba milk tea bar before it completely melts. All right, so number 10. The 10th big change is in addition to just providing your admission ticket when you go into the park, you will also have to be prepared to present a um, China government ID card or a valid travel document like a passport for each guest at the park turnstiles. Um, photos or printed copies of ID will not be accepted. Number 11, the 11th big change uh, is visitors to Shanghai Disneyland will have to undergo temperature screening upon arrival. Now, what's the temperature that they'll allow you into? What's the temperature that they reject you? How does that all work? Uh, they've not released that yet, but there will be temperature screening at arrival at uh, Shanghai Disneyland. And number 12, I'm sure the one a lot of you are wondering, especially if you've watched my Las Vegas series, and I know very controversial, uh, number 12, uh, everybody who attends uh, Shanghai Disneyland will have to wear a mask during their entire visit. And then people say, well, Chris, how does that work if you are eating? Uh, you have to wear it during the entire visit, except when you are dining. So if you are dining, then you don't uh, actually have to wear the mask. So those are the big changes coming to the Shanghai Disney Resort. No doubt many of those similar changes that will be coming to uh, a Disney Resort near you. Now I want to talk about some changes that are coming to uh, the Florida resorts as well. And these have come out via a... Um, a task force in Orange County, Florida, essentially what they are mandating uh, the theme parks there to do. So a little different because this has not been released directly from Disneyland. Uh, and if I click the right number of buttons, then I can see the chat so I can bring some up. Uh, Samir says, what about Hong Kong Disneyland? Hong Kong Disneyland will likely have a lot of these similar restrictions as Shanghai Disneyland, but they have not uh, announced uh, they've not announced opening dates for any of the other Disney theme parks except uh, Shanghai Disney at this point. Um, Berwin wants to know where we bought the boba ice cream. Uh, so this uh, boba ice cream right here, this tiger sugar boba ice cream, which I'm going to munch on a little bit now at this point. Um, brave as a tiger 
Tiger Sugar. This is like all the rage in Taiwan. Uh, we got this one from 99 Ranch Supermarkets. Uh, this upside down. 99 Ranch Supermarkets. It is, uh, you could call it a Chinese supermarket uh, that's here in Southern California. They're around the U.S. Uh, we also saw these recently at uh, Mitsua, which is a Japanese supermarket. Actually, we saw those a couple days ago um, at Mitsua and uh, did not did not buy one because we were going out walking, and then we went back, and they were all sold out. And OC Girl was sad because she loves these things. You probably want to see what it actually looks like. So here's what it looks like. And I probably need to move this microphone down a little bit, so I'm going to get a little more quiet. Uh, but otherwise, I will be um, putting ice cream on my microphone, and that is no good. And so here is this. Uh, you can see it's actually got boba in it. It's got um, the brown sugar and milk because these brown sugar boba milk drinks are all the rage in Taiwan. Mm, Rob wants to know, how long was Shanghai Disneyland closed? It's been closed since February? February, I believe. Somebody could correct me if I am wrong. Uh, so just about three months now, something like that. Um, and uh, Andrew says, I heard Disney World in Florida will open on June 1st. Uh, Florida residents, three weeks to everyone. They've not announced the date yet, uh, but uh, let's talk about some of the changes that are coming to uh, Disney in Florida, and then we'll go back to more questions. Okay, the number can go away at this point, and so can the comment go away. I'm going to be eating this as I go through this. Uh, mm hmm. Some people have said to me, you know, Chris, I really, I can't stand hearing you drink. It really bothers me listening to you drink, especially with that microphone. And you know, I'm sorry, but my human form cannot really talk for 45 minutes or an hour without uh, drinking. I probably don't have to eat but I just wanted to share these with you because they're so good. If you are at an Asian supermarket and you see these bars, again, the tiger, the tiger sugar bars, very good. You check it out. Okay, so at uh, Disney and Universal in Florida, so now this is what's happening in Florida, all employees must wear face masks. Uh, they will have touchless hand sanitizer at each ticketing entry and turnstile. They'll have touchless hand sanitizer at uh, each attraction entrance and exit. They will have temperature checks for staff prior to their shift, and those over 100.4 will not be allowed to enter the premises. All employees with flu-like symptoms will be advised to stay home. They'll wipe down the railings and surfaces after every use. And the guidance coming out from Orange County, Florida about capacities is that phase one, they'll allow them to open at 50% capacity and phase two at 75% capacity. So Florida is actually allowing them to open with a greater uh, number of people than uh, Shanghai is. In the lines, they're going to tape marking every six feet for the attraction queues. Uh, and for phase one and phase two, staff that are 65 years or older will be encouraged to stay home. Now, uh, Disney in Florida also has a lot of hotels. And so what are the hotels going to do? Uh, well, in phase one, the housekeeping services will be limited uh, to uh, limit guest and employee exposure. Um, they will promote mobile check-in. Uh, the housekeepers will only clean upon request. They won't clean every day uh, or when a guest departs. Uh, hotels should allow employees to work from home if they aren't playing critical role in serving guests. Mm. They will only deliver room service to guest doors right outside the door, and they will only provide self-parking, so no valet parking. Um, now, the uh, hotel mandates in hotels, they'll require hotel employees to wear face masks, hand sanitizer in plain sight, front desks to sanitize themselves on a regular basis, mini bars not to be stocked. Um, no self-service food items, spacing out the pool furniture, uh, extra sanitizing of door handles. They're going to remove all of the coffee makers, 
Um, they're going to remove guest collateral items, except those that are single use. They'll like, say, the pens and the pads of paper and those sorts of things they'll remove. Um, and as far as restaurants are concerned, uh, they will encourage paper and disposable menus, take out online orders, uh, and touchless hand sanitizer at the entry. Uh, and then in the different phases, the restaurants uh, will be limited to 50% capacity and 75% capacity. Now, there's uh, a number of questions where people say, um, you know, hey, Chris, what about Florida? What about Anaheim? How does that work? And uh, it's Angela says, Anaheim, uh, do you know if it's not going to open until next year? Because they have people... I don't know. They have not announced dates yet, but what they have said is that uh, before they open the main theme parks, they're likely going to open the shops, the restaurants, and the hotels, and then once they get those going, then they will open up the theme parks. So that's the that's the phasing. Mm -hmm. So, look at this. If I put my hand up, it'll focus on it. You can actually see right at the top of that, that's one of the, the bobas or the tapioca balls that are uh, coming out of there. So it's actually kind of like chewy. It really is. Pretty good. Hmm. Carmen Monster says, good luck eating ice cream and talking. It is a little bit of a challenge, but, you know, I am up for the challenge. All right. Well, so now it is... Um, Question and answer time. So uh, if you have questions, let me know. Uh, drop them in the chat. Uh, now is the time to ask. Um, Christina says, uh, Chris, how often do you go to Universal Studios in Hollywood? Not often. I think I have been to Universal Studios in Hollywood four times in my life. Uh, the last time was probably two years ago when I made the uh, like 10 things to know before you go to Universal Studios video. And Kathy says, wow, you were doing this late for you. It's only 2.45 uh, p.m. here in Melbourne. Uh, yes, it is late. It is currently 9.50 p.m. here in the evening. But uh, I decided to go on and do this right now because this press release uh, just dropped today about uh, Shanghai Disneyland being the first Disney theme park to reopen. So I wanted to make sure I got that all to you today. And the other reason why I'm doing it this late, Kirk says, we want to see the baby the baby is sleeping. Uh, so that also made this a good time to do this. Uh, we often put her to bed at just about 9 o'clock. Mm. Mm. Bill asks if I think Disneyland in Anaheim will be the last to open. Mm. I think Euro Disney in Paris will be the last to open. And I, I think maybe Disneyland Anaheim will be second to last after that. Yeah, certainly California is definitely keeping things considerably locked down as far as the lockdowns in the U.S. I think California and New York are fairly the most restrictive. I think Florida will see uh, definitely an opening before California does. Uh, yeah, Tony says that wearing a mask in uh, Jude in Florida will heat stroke. I, I would not look forward to that. I really wouldn't. Maybe this is like an ASMR video. Can you hear me chewing? You know, those are like a big thing, like where people watch other people, like make the sounds of chewing or breathing. I find those things anyway. Does anybody online on this watch ASMR videos? Uh, Andrew says, if I've heard news from airlines starting March 1st, Delta and American and JetBlue require face mask. Absolutely. Actually, I did a whole live stream about it two live streams ago. Uh, face masks, blood tests, and 13 uh, more changes that are coming to airlines. Uh, Kirk wants me to do more Taiwan videos. When we go to Taiwan, I definitely will. Uh, we hope to go there again once we can actually go again. Uh, Jenny Fed, thanks, thanks for getting this information out on and doing an impromptu live stream. My pleasure, Jenny. Thank you for watching. Uh, Jake asks, what is my favorite Disney ride or attraction? Um, I have two. So like at Disneyland, uh, I think our favorite attraction is Space Mountain. It's just a really fun kind of roller coaster. Like, if there's short lines, we always go on that. In uh, We also really enjoy Toy Story's Midway Mania. It's kind of like a, like a shooting, like you ride on it and you shoot at things. Uh, and then in 
Disney World at the, what, Animal Kingdom? Uh, they've got the roller coaster there that goes forward and then it goes backwards. I think that one is really neat. Kirk says, uh, we know you have a computer background, but what industry do you work in and was it affected uh, by COVID? I would say I work in the software industry, so the computer industry. Um, we are currently teleworking. Hmm. I mean, not currently, because it's 9.30 at night, but that's how we've uh, managed to deal with this. Uh, what's your favorite Disneyland in the world, Chris? Excellent question, Tokyo Spin. My favorite Disney theme park in the world is Tokyo Disney Sea. I really like Tokyo Disney Sea. By the way, uh, if you have not seen my videos on Tokyo Disney Sea, in the description of this video, I have a link to my entire Disney theme park series playlist. I've got lots of videos on uh, the California Disney theme parks, uh, and I have a few videos on Tokyo Disney Sea and Tokyo Disneyland, but Tokyo Disney Sea is my favorite. Uh, Brendan Patrick says it is almost 12 here in Nashville. Well, hey, thank you for tuning in, Brendan. I appreciate it. Uh, and so, you know, I think with that, it's gonna bring us to the end of this live stream because I've shared all the big changes with you. I've shared what's going on in Florida, and I've shared a little bit of a ooh, Tiger Milk boba bar that is now starting to melt. And because the ice cream is starting to melt, that means it's over. But, but I can't go yet. I can't go yet because I've not given away the swag. Mm. So uh, some lucky... Lucky viewer is going to win a Yellow Productions Neck Gator. You could use this as a face mask inside uh, Shanghai Disney when you go. And if you want to win this, you have to answer my question. My question is, what is the capacity of Shanghai Disneyland? Uh, if you can answer that question, hmm, the first person to answer that question hmm, will win the Neck Gator. I will ship it anywhere in the world. And... Um, if you didn't get a chance to win one, well, you can buy one on the Yellow Productions Etsy shop. You will also find a link in the description to the uh, Etsy shop if you want to buy another one. Hmm. And Andrew says, I forgot to do the giveaway. I did not forget to do the giveaway. We are doing the giveaway right now. For some reason my screen that shows the chat messages that allows me to put them up on the screen is being really slow today. Oh, there it goes. Um, a lot of people that said a lot of numbers and let me find the one who was the winner because there was indeed a winner. Gallivanting Gals wins 80,000. That's the right answer. Gallivanting Gals, let me know your address either with a message on Facebook. You'll find a link to my Facebook page in the description below or send me an email at chris at yellow.net with two W's, Y-E-L-L-O, www.net. When will the next live stream be? Well, you know, lots of breaking news in this whole travel world right now. So as things come up, I will be doing live streams. So uh, if this was your first time here, you want to get in on some of these future live streams about news for other Disney theme parks, news about Las Vegas, news about the travel industry, or be here for just great fun travel guides, uh, travel guides on Japan, London, all sorts of places. Well, make sure you subscribe, click the bell or turn on notifications, and uh, check out links in the description if you want to see more of my Disney theme park videos, more of my live streams, or of course my most popular series on Las Vegas. As usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll I'll see you all in the next video.